Okay, welcome. Welcome again, everybody. Nice to see you. Um, my name is Ed Berger. I'm currently the um, interim head of School of Engineering Education. Uh, I'm really grateful to hear from the other uh, speakers today, but I'm actually really thrilled to be able to introduce to you Dr. Carrie Douglas, who is Associate Professor in Engineering Education. Um, she's been a Purdue-affiliated person for a while, but she's been on our faculty uh, just in the last six or seven years and is now Associate Professor uh, with tenure. And she has done an, an awful lot of things in her career. Right now, uh, one of the things that she is, um, is she's uh, one, of the, one of the key leaders in the SCALE project um, that you may have heard about. Um, and there's a lot uh, in the news about SCALE. There's a lot in the news about um, semiconductors in general. Um, but oh, by the way, Carrie is also a career award winner on a very different um, topic in which she's, in, she's a, a, a really deep nationally and internationally recognized expert. So Carrie is multi-talented for sure, and I'm uh, thrilled to see her development over the past few years. I've been her uh, part of her mentoring team uh, for five or six years now, uh, and the, the growth and the, um, the leadership in terms of thought and action um, both in research and teaching has been uh, tremendous. So I'm really thrilled to introduce Dr. Carrie Douglas. Um, so my talk's going to be a little different than the other ones, but I thought, you know, this is celebrating, and so um, I thought I'm going to talk about what I want. <laughs> and I invited my grad students here, um, my team, because I'm sort of giving the talk that maybe isn't, like, maybe I wish someone would have given me before I went on to my academic journey. And so um, I think we'll hit some of the stuff that um, Maria wanted us to talk about, but it's definitely going to be a little different than the others. So. Um, the first thing I want to say is that, uh, well, this is a road in Door County, and this is sort of what my career path has looked like. Um, it was never a, I, you know, I know where I'm going, I know exactly what I'm going to do. It's more like, oh, this seems really interesting, and this seems really interesting, and along the way, I'm still going. And I think the thing I want to point out is um, I still don't totally know where I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna, and so I think um, I, as um, as Ed said, um, I graduated with my PhD in um, 2012. I postdoced for a while. I was a visiting assistant professor, and then I started my tenure track in um, 2016. So, um, so a little bit about me. Um, and I think that'll kind of help understand why maybe I wasn't always one to the other, um, is that um, I have four kids. And I really never heard of anybody being a professor or tenure tracker successful that had a family. And I don't know, there's actually some research on women faculty members who are at R1 institutions, and the vast majority of them with children are divorced. Um, I think they've done a study, um, I saw one study that almost all women um, in tenure track positions in the state of California who were still married, uh, well, who weren't divorced, either had never been married or didn't have children. Um, maybe their husband didn't, it don't work. But, um, so I have always been very aware that um, I, I wanna keep my family together. <laughs> And being a professor was very overwhelming because I, you know, we see a lot of examples and, and surely, obviously, I mean, I want to be clear, like, I am successful. As Ed mentioned, I've been on the leadership of over $50 million in external awards. Um, I'm an NSF career award winnie, um, awardee. Um, but I want you to know that um, everybody deserves a life outside of being a professor. <laughs> And so that's what I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about. Because maybe you don't have four kids, but you have something besides just your work. Um, and so, um, so there are my four kids. We went to a Reds game. My husband's there at the end. I have two dogs. You can see I really like hiking. Um, and my four kids, now that they're three of the four teenagers, they don't always cooperate. So if I'm going to get their picture, it's their backsides. You know, um, 
And there's my research team right now. And you notice I take them hiking also, and they're way more cooperative. <laughs> Um, and so uh, I'm going to give you Carrie's rules for being a professor. So um, the first rule is um, to be a person. And yes, I, I know, but this is why you all came, because <laughs> you don't know when your pictures are going to show up. Um, so it's never, like, I am never too busy to be kind. And whether that's the staff that we interact with, you know, the people that help us get our, you know, in the business office, our account managers, the cleaning um, folks, our colleagues, grad students, undergrads, like we're never too busy to be kind and be a person because they all have other stuff too. Um, in terms of like being a person to family and friends, like we have to show up still. Like our family still needs us, you know, and so, Along the way, you know, while I'm pursuing all the stuff that, that Carrie does, there's still life happening, right? Like, um, and so it's important to be part of it. So um, being present in the moments that really matter. So that one picture there with my four kids was, you know, a first day of school. Um, there's a picture of um, my husband driving us back from the Taylor Swift concert this summer. I'm passed out. <laughs> And yes, I worked, you know, like I work late before we go somewhere. And, but that's one of the cool things about our job is that, you know, we are flexible. And so I can make the time to do what I want to do. Um, the chair there is um, my husband's grandmother. She has Alzheimer's. And we bring her meals a few times a week. Her and um, her husband, right before the pandemic, we helped them move to the West Lafayette area. Um, and so recently, I. I took her to get a manicure and pedicure. And uh, when she was in there, she looked at me and she said, if I were a cat, I would purr. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, this is just moments you don't get back. So OK, I've already used up five minutes telling you. But um, so yeah, being there and being present. And the other is, I'm a person to myself. Like, OK, so apart from all my roles in life and the things I do for people, I have to take care of me too. And so I need rest. I need to exercise. Um, and I'm more than what I do as a professor. Like, okay, next rule is to be stubborn and about what you really want. And yes, my husband would say I'm as stubborn as a jackass sometimes. Um, but my point about this is sort of what others have said is I have been rejected a lot. I, I submitted like three applications to Purdue tenure track positions and like didn't even get a phone call. I made, it was on my third application for the NSF Career Award that it finally went through. Um, and so I think the big difference between a lot of people and what gets them certain is like, how do you deal with no and how do you deal with rejection? And like, I take the no as a challenge. Like, you don't think I'm good enough? I'm going to show you wrong. It gets a little chip on my shoulder. <laughs> I'll be, but. Um, I, I use it to propel me forward. The, sec, the third rule is to commit to others' success. And there's an African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. The problems we're working on, if they actually matter, they need more than just me to help solve them. And so I'm get, I want to give to other people and their success because they should work on those problems too. So you can see here. Um, Oh, different students, um, like in, we've been to Sweden, we've, uh, like my one, one student there, he left to get a job at Google and he started making way more money than me. And so like what their success is, is different. You know, not everybody's going to be a carry. Um, my student, Lara Cruz, my former, she's now at University of Florida and um, her and her colleagues this year won best conference paper um, for um, American Society of Engineering Education, like overall best conference paper. Um, I've won lots of, not lots, I've won my share of division best papers, but she got the whole, con like a conference best paper. I'm so proud of her. Um, I could go on and on um, at their successes. Um, also being committed to my colleagues' success. Like it's not just about me. 
So here you can see that I'm like was leading a workshop with scale and we had faculty from we have faculty from 19 institutions and they're coming together and I'm the like associate professor and I'm going to point out like in that one picture right there he's the ECE head at University of Florida like like still working and helping other people be successful even though like I'm junior you know like it's not just about me again if the problems we're working on it needs more than me to solve them um, the other one's like folks from Vanderbilt, and I, just for time, I'm going to move it along. And the other is like is knowing who's committed to you. So I am not a superwoman, as my daughter, as my 13 year old daughter responded. Don't worry, mom. No one thought you were. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the only like the way that I am able to do all this with four kids is because I am really supported. So you know, well, I'm out traveling or giving talks, my husband's waiting in line to pick the kids up from school, you know, or he's the one, like you can see, like he's out there playing ball um, with our daughter. Um, and so it, whether you have a partner or not, like you need community and you need people that will support you and help you because you're, you are more than your job. So, and, yeah, even, and that's my daughter. You can see when I was winning an award, she came and <laughs> she, they came. She wasn't, she wasn't totally thrilled. It was the only time, though, I'll say that I saw someone making fun of Mung while he was speaking. It was like <laughs> um, and my colleagues, obviously, also. And so, like Heidi Defus Dukes, um, when I was a visiting assistant professor, she um, helped me write an uh, NSF proposal on my research area. And so I was able to be uh, the lead PI as a VAP, and it was, an, it was funded at $800,000. So that's part of my being stubborn. Like if you keep getting told no, you show, I can bring in the money. You'll look at me now. Um, and other colleagues, um, Julie Martin is um, actually my mentor, one of my mentors, Ed, connected with me, Julie, and little did you know that she's like a sister to me now. Um, and there's Shania Perzer and Tamara Moore. Some of you might know Stephanie Masta. And then the fifth rule, and my last one, is to enjoy the ride. Like, we get to do a lot of really cool stuff and go really cool places. So these are all things I've done while on work trips, right? Like, so, you know, we had to go to D.C. to go to an NSF thing. Well, me and I, my husband and her and her, like, our husbands joined us, and then that night we did a cruise on the Delaware Bay. You know, there, um, in Sweden, I had to go to Uppsala um, for a conference. I got tea, like the afternoon tea in London. I, this is, we've got pretty cool jobs. They give us a lot of neat experiences. And so with all the, you know, things that you should be doing, I think it's important to say, like, enjoy it too. So, oh, and there's my suits. But they're, they're also part of the enjoyment. Oh, do you see that souvenir sign? Prob probably the best souvenir shop in town. I love that. I love seeing the different cultures. Um, but that's my, that's my talk. So thank you. Thanks for humoring me. OK, we have a moment or two for questions. Thank you very much. You know, one of the, when we mentor our younger colleagues, uh, a sort of a complaint that I fairly, uh, I hear quite often is how to do work-life balance because they feel they are working 24 seven and don't have a life, but you focus on the fact that you are not just a professor. There's a lot more to life than just being a professor. Uh, what uh, advice would you have for, for me to convey to these people? Well, there's actually, I mean, so there, well, there's books <laughs> you could give, but what, like, there's the book Rest. Actually, the person goes through and talks about different research on when people's brains rest, they become more creative. Like, when we are working all the time, like, how, like, like, we're in it. We're not actually taking that break and letting that, you know, our brains 
work on it passively. You know, like when you sleep, your your brain keeps working. Um, so I, I, I mean, it's hard. Like with, I think getting the, I think the norm, the mentality is sort of like if you're not working, you know, 80 hours a week, then you're not going to be successful or something. But you know, actually, it was in, I forgot to mention it, but I had the Galileo's Daughter book up there, and the reason is that, um, I don't know if you all know this, but Galileo, um, he never married, but they did have three children. And when he was at his university post, he moved his, very radically, moved his family to a house near campus. And his colleagues told him, you can't be an academic and have a family. And so this message, like, like, I read that um, early on. Um, actually, I read it in one of my kids' books. It was Who Was um, Galileo. But um, that message has been there and sort of ingrained in the system. That's part of why I wanted to give the talk, is I think people don't see examples of successful researchers who have an identity besides being a professor. Thank you. So you know that the um, you, you talked about one stage of the career of, of one's life where you know the work life balance with the family, um, and then once you have those people gone that are distracting you, you enjoy like, a totally different life, and and have other um, other challenges. Uh, and in fact, you fall off the end and say, "Oh, now I can work all the time. I don't have any distractions." But when you, you mention this, you know, I, uh, Wayne and I have shared, uh, you know, the same kind of, the same position in, in recent years. What could we as administrators do or have done, could we have done, beyond the obvious of not having meetings after five o'clock? What kind of, of deeper thing might we be able to do to promote, not and, and for women uh, and for men who have families? to promote better uh, work-life balance and make it possible for them? I think about it a lot. It's a tough question. I don't think there's one single answer. I think their culture communicates as much as any policy. You know, so maybe you might not ever ask me to have an, a meeting after five, but um, trust me, I get, like, it's a hard, it's hard to say no. And after a while, you start thinking, like, I'm, you know, I don't want anybody to think I'm, not capable or you, you know some I think earlier in my career I just almost never talked about my kids or my family at all because I didn't want that to be seen as a weak a weakness um, and and so now, that's why I sort of like now I'm I'm making it my mission to be more transparent and say like you know you can do this it's not because I can do it all on my own but I you know again like I my husband is fully hands-on, way more than me. Um, but th there's a culture, I think it's a culture thing and people need to be more willing to, to talk about the other things. And like you said, not everyone is gonna have, a, you know, my, like how I spend my out of work time is my, you know, my family. But maybe you wanna do the roller derby, like, you know? Or <laughs> I actually met a professor who, that she does do roller derby, so that's, you know, or other things, right? Like we need other parts of our life. And um, yeah, so I think it's, it's hard because it's so per the, the culture is so pervasive. We certainly don't give points and the promote, you know, as we move toward promotion and tenure for what you do outside, you right. know? It, right. we, it's, it's a totally unbalanced kind of, of evaluation in that respect. Right, and I know people who no offense, guys. My, like I said, I'm not sexist because my husband really does take care of the kids most of the time. But, but at the same time, I know of colleagues who've used their parental leave to get more done for their research. And so, again, like when we're talking about equity and how women, you know, like, oh, well, this person's on parental leave or on family leave. Look at all that he got done this year. And you know, if you compared that to a woman who had a baby and was at home nursing and all of that, like, it, it, it doesn't compare the same. So I think, 
because I always felt it, I think it made me feel like I had, I had to be more. Um, and when you're younger, you can stay up all night. Like I could put the kids to bed and then I could do my research. And then the older I get, that's harder. So now it's more like, you know, okay, I need to make time to still be a wife. I need to make time to, like I said, show up for my kids um, and my other family because, I mean, in the end, they, they matter. Sorry, like they, they matter more than like probably Purdue. You, not probably, they matter more than Purdue yeah. because, you know, they're the ones with me the whole way through. And, um, and so I, I don't even like the phrase work-life balance actually because, um, because it's my whole life and I have to figure out how the whole thing works. It's not I'm working, I'm not. Like I think it's, ha you know, what, what, I have to make the whole thing work. Like I'm alive when I'm at work and chances are I'm probably thinking something about work when I'm living. Yeah. Yeah, and I think our creativity um, depends on our ability to do other things besides just work. And I think we have to be better examples for our graduate students. Yeah, a lot of them say things like they don't, they're afraid of being tenure track professors because they see how busy we all are. And we, we do model like what, what, it, what it takes to be successful. stories and your success, your failure, and your rules, and show us how to be a complete package. We really appreciate that. So before we wrap it up, we're very happy our Dean Arvin Raman is get out uh, from meeting with Provost and join us. And now... Uh, thank, thank you, everyone. And uh, just uh, my apologies for uh, not being here at the very start, but, uh, you know, sincere congratulations to all the faculty uh, who are uh, featured here today. Getting hired into Purdue is not a given. It's extremely hard. Uh, going through an assistant professor tenure track and getting an associate professor is as hard. It doesn't, it doesn't get easier, right? So this is a tremendous achievement. And so uh, the first thing we want to do with this series is to congratulate um, uh, our faculty who have been promoted. It's not, it's not and you heard uh, the last example, all those st stages, getting in was hard. Once in, succeeding was hard, right? It's very hard to see that. So that's really important. Second thing we wanted to highlight was kind of use the chance for faculty to reflect upon decisions. And many kind of, the kind of things you heard from these faculty um, are key to other assistant professors, to PhDs and postdocs in the audience who are saying, hey, maybe I want to take that next step. But the idea is really that we share best practices, what worked, what, what didn't work, so we don't burn ourselves down, you know, out when we're trying to do these kind of tenure track positions uh, in the future. Uh, how to succeed um, in the best way possible is the question, right? So you heard great wisdom on that. And the third opportunity here, we hope, is that when you heard these faculty, you had a chance to see what great stuff they're working on, and you have a chance to collaborate with them. And I do hope, in fact, it has happened in the past that many of the colleagues attending this meeting reach out to the faculty who have just made the presentation and go, oh, I didn't know you worked on that, and hey, that, that starts a research collaboration. So those are the three things we're kind of celebrating in this series. Uh, thank you all for coming. I think this is the last one we have. Uh, we have one more this year uh, on no, November 29th, right? So yeah, same place, same time. So please be sure uh, to be here for that. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. <laughs>